Hey friends! I know it's been a few days since I posted a video. I'm sorry about that. It's been crazy busy. I guess it's that time of year. But I made it a point to sit down and make a video tonight. Uh, we will continue reading the first of the Judy Moody series. Judy Moody was in a mood by Megan McDonald. Um, as I mentioned in the, the last video, these chapters are not numbered. Uh, they have names, and do not trust me to keep track of the numbers, so we're just going to go by the names. All right. Two heads are better than one. Judy was teaching Mouse to walk on two legs when the phone rang. Hello? All she heard was air. Hello? Judy asked the air. Hello? Judy? Are you allowed to come to my party? A voice asked. A Frank Pearl ver voice. It had only, only been two days since he gave her the invitation. Wrong number, said Judy, hanging up. She dangled her new pizza table from a string in front of Mouse's nose. The phone rang again. Hello? Is this the Moody's? Not now, Frank. I'm in the middle of an important experiment. Okay. Bye. The phone rang a third time. The experiment's not over yet, Judy yelled into the phone. What experiment? asked Rocky. Never mind, said Judy. Let's go to Vic's, said Rocky. I want to get something for my me collage. Vix was the mini-mart down the hill where they had cool prizes in the jawbreaker machine, like tattoos that wash off and magic tricks. Let me ask, said Judy. Mom, can I go to Vix with Rocky? Sure, said Mom. Sure, said Judy, tossing Mouse the pizza table. I'm going too, said Stink. No, you're not, Judy told him. You and Rocky can take him along, said Mom, giving her, her one of those looks. <clears throat> but he doesn't know about crossing through China and Japan on the way, Judy said. Only best friends knew that first speed bump on the way was crossing into China and the second, Japan. I'm sure you could teach him, Mom said. Teach me, said Stink. Meet me at the manhole, Judy said back into the phone. The manhole was exactly halfway between Judy's front door and Rocky's. Over the summer, they had measured it with a very long ball of string. She ran out the door. Stink ran out the door after her. Rocky had a dollar. Judy had a dollar. Stink had six pennies. If we put our money together, we can buy eight jawbreakers, said Rocky. Two heads are better than one, J Judy laughed. Get it? She unscrunched the dollar bill from her pocket and pointed to George Washington's head. I've got six heads, said Stink, showing his pennies. That's because you're a monster. Get it? Judy and Rocky cracked up. Stink did not have enough money for even one jawbreaker. You'll break your mouth if you try to eat eight jawbreakers, said Stink. I could eat at least two for you. It's for the prizes, Judy told him. Eight quarters gives us eight chances to win a magic trick, Rocky said. I need a new magic trick to paste on my meat collage. Hey, wait, said Judy. I just remembered. I need my dollar to buy band-aids. Band-aids are boring, said Stink. Besides, you have ten million. Dad says we have more band-aids in our bathroom than the Red Cross. But I want to be a doctor, said Judy. Like Elizabeth Blackwell, first woman doctor, she started her own hospital. She knew how to operate and put together body parts and everything. Body parts? Yuck, Stink said. You saved band-aid box tops all summer, said Rocky. I thought you had enough to send away for that doctor doll. I did. I already ordered it. Back in July. I'm still waiting for it to come. But now, I need a microscope. You can look at blood or scabs or anything with it. Stink asked, when do we get to China? We're still on Jefferson Street, Stink, Rocky told him. Let's look for rocks until we get to China, said Stink. Let's see who can find the best one, said Rocky. Then the three of them... Study the ground as they walked. Judy found five pink pebbles 
and a Bazooka Joe comic with a fortune that read, Money is coming your way. Rocky found a blue Lego and a stone with a hole in the middle. A lucky stone! I found a black diamond, said Stink. That's just charcoal, said Judy. It's just glass, Rocky said. Wait, Judy said, crossing her eyes at Rocky. I think it's a moon rock. Don't you, Rocky? Yes, said Rocky. Definitely. How do you know? asked Stink. It has craters, Judy said. How did it get here? asked Stink. It fell from the sky, said Judy. <clears throat> really? asked Stink. Really, said Rocky. In my Space Junk magazine, it tells how a moon rock fell from space and left a hole in Arizona once. And our teacher last year told us how a moon rock hit a dog in Egypt one time. No lie, Judy told her brother. You're lucky. Moon rocks are billions of years old. Space Junk says moon rocks are dusty on the outside and sparkly on the inside, said Rocky. There's only one way to find out for sure if this is a moon rock, said Judy. Judy scouted around for a large rock. Then she clobbered Stink's lump, smashing the moon rock to bits. You smashed it, said Stink. Look, I think I see a sparkle, said Rocky. Stink, you found a real moon rock. All right, Judy said. It's not a moon rock anymore, cried Stink. Look at it this way, Stink, said Judy. Now you have something better than a moon rock. What could be better than a moon rock? asked Stink. Lots and lots of moon dust, Judy and Rocky fell down laughing. I'm going home, said Stink. He scraped up handfuls of the smashed rock, filling his pockets with dirt. Judy and Rocky laughed at the rest, the rest of the way to China, ran backward to Japan, then hopped on one foot while patting their heads until they got to Vicks. At Vicks, they put their George Washington heads together for one small box of band-aids and had enough left over for one jawbreaker each. Neither of them won a magic trick for Rocky's meat collage. Not even a troll or a miniature comic book or tattoo. Maybe I could put a jawbreaker on my collage, said Rocky. Are you going to stick some band-aids on yours? <laughs> Still a nickel left, Rocky said. So they bought a gumball and saved it for Stink. When they reached Judy's driveway, Stink ran toward them, his pockets jangling with money. Stink had brown lunch bags lined up on the front steps. Guess what, called Stink. I made three dollars just since I got home. No way, said Judy. Let's see, said Rocky. Stink emptied his pockets. Rocky counted twelve quarters. <laughs> What's in the bag, asked Judy. Everybody in the state of Virginia must want it. Yeah, what are you selling anyway, asked Rocky. Moon dust, said Stink. <laughs> Next chapter. My favorite pets. It was Labor Day, a no school day. Judy looked up from her meat collage on the dining room table. We need a new pit pet, Judy announced to her family. A new pet? What's wrong with Mouse? asked Mom. Mouse opened one eye. I have to pick my favorite pet. How can I pick my favorite pet when I only have one? Pick Mouse, said Mom. Mouse is so old, and he's afraid of ev everything. Mouse is a lump that purrs. You're not thinking of a dog, I hope, said Dad. Mouse jumped off the chair and stretched. Mouse would definitely not like that, said Judy. How about a goldfish? asked Stink. Mouse rubbed up against Judy's leg. Mouse would like that way too much, Judy said. I was thinking of a two-toed sloth. Right, said Stink. They're neat, said Judy. She showed Stink its picture in the Rainforest magazine. See? They hang upside down all day. They even sleep upside down. You're upside down, said Stink. What do they eat? asked Dad. It says here they eat leaf-cutter ants and fire-bellied toads, Judy read. That should be easy, said Stink. Tell you what, Judy, said Dad. Let's take a ride over to the pet store. I'm not saying we'll get a sloth, but it's always fun to look around. Maybe 
It'll even help me think of a five-letter word for fish that starts with M for my crossword puzzle. Let's all go, said Mom. When they arrived at Fur and Fangs, Judy saw snakes and parrots, hermit crabs, and guppies. She even saw a five-letter word, fish word beginning with M, a black molly. Do you have any two-toed sloths? She asked the pet store lady. Sorry, fresh out, said the lady. How about a newt or a turtle? Asked Dad. Did you see the hamsters? Asked Mom. Never mind, said Judy. There's nothing from the rainforest here. Maybe they have a stink bug, Stink said. One's enough, said Judy, narrowing her eyes at Stink. They picked out a squeaky toy mouse for mouse. Then they went to pay for it, and Judy noticed a green plant with teeth sitting on the counter. What's that? She asked the pet store lady. A Venus flytrap, the lady said. It's not an animal, but it doesn't cost much, and it's easy to take care of. See these things that look like mouths with teeth? Each one closes like a trap door. It eats bugs around the house, like flies and ants, that sort of thing. You can feed it a little raw hamburger, too. Rare, said Judy Moody. Cool, said Stink. Good idea, said Mom. Sold, said Dad. Judy set her new pet on her desk, where the angle of the sunlight hit it just right. Mouse watched from the bed bottom bunk with one eye open. <laughs> I can't wait to take my new pet to school. Tomorrow for show and tell, Judy told Stink. It's just a rare plant from the rainforest. I'm sorry, it's just like a rare plant from the rainforest. It is? Stink asked. Sure, said Judy. Just think. There could be a medicine hiding right here in these funny green teeth. When I'm a doctor, I'm going to study plants like this and, like this and discover cures for ucky diseases. What are you going to name it? asked Stink. I don't know yet, said Judy. You could call it Bughead, since it likes bugs. Nah, said Judy. Judy watered her new pet. She sprinkled grow fast on the soil. When Stink left, she sang songs to it. I know an old lady who swallowed a fly, she sang, till the old lady swallowed a horse. She still couldn't think of a good name. Rumpelstiltskin? Too long. Thing? Maybe. Stink, she called. Go get me a fly. How am I going to catch a fly? asked Stink. One fly. I'll give you a dime. Stink ran to the window behind the couch and brought back a fly. Gross. That fly is dead. It was going to be dead in a minute anyway. Judy scooped up the dead fly with the tip of her ruler and dropped it into one of the mouths. In a flash, the trap closed around the fly just like the pet store lady said. Rare, said Judy. Snap trap, Stink said, adding sound effects. Go get me an ant, a live one this time. Stink wanted to see the Venus flytrap eat again, so he got his sister an ant. Snap trap, said Judy and Stink when another trap closed. Double rare, Judy said. Stink, go catch me a spider or something. I'm tired of catching bugs, said Stink. Then go ask Mom or Dad if we have any raw hamburger. Stink frowned. Please, pretty please, with bubble gum and ice cream on top, Judy begged. Stink didn't budge. I'll let you feed it this time. Stink ran to the kitchen and came back with a hunk of raw hamburger. He plopped a big glob of hamburger into an open trap. That's way too much, Judy yelled, but it was too late. The mouth snapped trapped around it, hamburger oozing out of its teeth. In a blink, the whole arm drooped, collapsing in the dirt. You killed it! You're in trouble, Stink! Mom! Dad! Judy called. Judy showed her parents what happened. Stink killed my Venus flytrap! I didn't mean to, said Stink. The trap closed really fast. It's not dead. It's digesting, said Dad. The jaws will probably open by tomorrow morning, said Mom. Maybe it's just sleeping or something, said Stink. Or something, said Judy. All right, that is the end of that chapter. All right, so there was a lot of talk 
in there um, about pets, different types of things they saw at the pet store, which made me wonder, um, do any of you have pets? Uh, maybe share in the comments about them. Uh, here in our house, we have two dogs named Listen and Magic. We have a sun conure named Sammy. We have a green cheek conure named Avo. And three lovebirds, they're my daughters, I'm thinking, um, Kiwi, Cinder, and Violet. And then we have a fish tank full of fish also. So we have a lot of pets here. <laughs> so. Tell me about any pets you guys have. And tune in next time for more of Judy Moody was in a mood.